In this tutorial, we'll go over the Firebase backend setup. Hey guys, in this video, we will be going over the backend setup for the boxed out product. Head over to github.com forward slash fault stacks forward slash boxed out. You can clone the repo, you can open up that code in your Visual Studio code. We've completed the backend setup and it is a very cool setup. Even if you dislike Firebase or don't think it'll be suitable for scaling, the setup that we are using is very good regardless of the platform that it's running on. So as you remember, in the system technical overview, if you didn't watch that video, please look at that and the decisions that we made. We decided that based on the process that we followed, we saw that we will have two types of functions, reactive and idle functions. The reactive functions are the cloud functions that will only react to data changing in our system. That would be a Firestore document being updated, a new addition to a Firestore collection, or user authentication changes or anything like that. The idle functions are functions that will be sitting idle until it is called by a user through an HTTP request. So because of that, we have set up our project as follows. The traditional way of setting up your index file for Firebase is to export every single function similar to this. Let me increase the size of that for you guys to see. You would usually not have any of this and you would export your functions like this you would have multiple functions i actually have a few of that in other projects and when your backend grows your index file grows with it as well it's not a very practical solution given the size of the backend that we want to build because of that we have set up a more dynamic structure as long as you follow certain naming conventions so in this index file this code will most likely stay exactly like this throughout the entire development of this backend the first thing you'll see is this little thing called export helper and it calls build reactor functions and then build the idle api functions this will keep it like that and whatever functions we have in terms of reactive or the idle api will be added in automatically and that's what i want to go through with you guys now before we go over that let me show you how a reactive function will be written in this code base if we go over to orders we'll have two folders one for idle and one for reactive the reason they are in folders will be clear once you see the setup for this backend if you open up a reactive function, you'll see inside it has it imports the functions and then it creates its function and exports it using the exact same name as the name of the file. That will become clearer as I go through the implementation of the actual dynamic loading of the functions. What this function is saying is when a document in the orders collection is deleted, we will log out. The deleted snapshots id that will just log out the document so the way that you create a new function would be to simply take the function that you want to write and we'll create a new file on order created dot function dot ts this file should have the same name as the file name then we just want to import functions and that is it now this will automatically be added into the firebase backend and i can show you that if i head over to the source folder go into the backend into the functions folder and then to run npm build so we can generate the JavaScript from the TypeScript. Once that is ready, we can serve this function and you should see in addition to the order deleted function being exported, the on order created function is exported as well. And you can see that over there as well as the on order deleted function. I actually wanna show you how we can test that quickly. If we do emulators start, 
it will start up everything and because this function has been exported listening for a new order created that means that if we do create a new order in our local firestore database it should print out the order id let's just wait for all of that to be exported i'm going to open up firestore if i create new orders collection and i put the document id just added put the field name value full stacks save that we should see on orders on order created has been executed so that's actually just being reprinted because we're saving and it's rebuilding it's watching this log but if you look at the actual logs it'll say the order id was just printed out if we add another document we say new doc and we type some stuff in here once we save that it'll be added and in the logs you can see the new document id being printed out what that means for the system is that each function will have its own file the file should be named according to what it is doing and that name should be the same as the file name for the function the reason for that for that is that we can make sure that the function listening for the on order created can easily be found if we simply search for the files for that function. This is a very scalable solution because we can, for each of these reactive functions, give its own file. So if it is a big function, it won't be cluttering any of the other files. This will be done for all of these other parts as well. Now, for the naming convention, we have to get back to the index.tx file. If you look at the build reactive function, what it does is it gets all the files that has .function.js. Now I know that the, the function file ends in a .ts, but if you look at the generated code, it actually puts out .js files. Once we have the function files, we loop through it. We get the group name by getting the second part of the path. The function name by stripping off the end of the file and taking the last part of the path and then we basically just add that into the group for the exports it's quite a basic thing so once it's done once it gets to this point all of the functions in this project that ends in dot function dot ts will be added to the group that it was found in and it will be added to the exports now the same thing goes for an idle api let me show you how an endpoint would look so this would be one single endpoint on the orders api this will return the menu items so let's do let's just change the name of it we'll call it get cards dot endpoint dot ts paste this in there get cards now again the function name has to match the file name because we're using that file name to dynamically add the routes to the express application so we'll call it get cards. We'll call the response cards. Give it those things to return. I'm not going to change any of that. And if we look at the function that's currently running now, let's find the API endpoint for the orders API. So if we go to get cards, there's no path for get cards. Now we've added this single file called getcards.endpoint.ts. I'm going to stop this. I am going to run the build function and then I'm going to actually serve only the functions because I've shown you how the Firestore reactor functions will work. When that is complete and we go to the orders API, if I now go to get cards, there's my endpoint. Easy, very easy setup. I think this will help us tremendously at the beginning. Moving a bit faster than you would generally develop in a Firestore project, given the maintenance required of these large index files that's usually associated with a Firebase backend. That's basically how our endpoint looks. You can see that all these endpoints look the same. The other thing that I have to mention is that we have to export the request type of the endpoint. The reason for that is when you look at the API file itself, you'll see a similar thing to the, the index file that I showed you at the beginning. 
All it does is create a new boxed out API class, passes in the name of the API, calls build, and then exports the router from, from this orders API as the API for the class. If you open up build, you'll see a similar pattern than the one you saw before. We'll get all the files ending in .endpoint.js, get the file, get the function name, log out what's in there, get the endpoint from the file, we'll check if the things are there that's required. The first thing is to see if the function name matches the file name. If it doesn't, I give you a clear message telling you what to do to make sure that it matches exactly the file name. We'll check if the request type was defined. If it has been defined, then we go on and we create a route on this router depending on the type of request that you passed in. We use the function name for the endpoint and then we pass in the actual function to call to execute that endpoint. This will be what you export right there. So it will call this function. Now the way that this API class gets added into the entire database is by this function, which is checking for .api.js and basically just creating one express app per API, which means that the orders API will have its own express app with all of its paths in there. This will make it easier for us to manage. So for orders, this payments API will have its own set of parts because of its singular express app that is passed to it. It's added as the API, which is why we have the name for the, for the group as well as the API at the end of it. That is basically what I wanted to show you. I didn't want to take you through the tutorial of building these actual things because I think it's actually very bad TypeScript that I'm, I'm writing over here. I just wanted to get the setup done as a version one to give an idea to some people that might be more experienced in TypeScript as to what I want to accomplish and then they could suggest or do a pull request or we can discuss it on how we can make this more robust and maybe even turn it into a package that we want to use. That's basically everything I wanted to go over. I think this is a very cool setup and that's about it. If anyone has any ideas around it or any feedback on it, this will be the way that we are building the Firebase backend. If you want to read in more details and maybe have a slower read, head over to github.com slash foldstacks slash boxed out and then just read through the readme that you can find in the backend folder. As always, if you want to join in, please comment in the Foldstacks channel. Please join our discussions. Please comment in the issues. I'll create a discussion specifically for this backend setup so that we can talk about the maintenance and the code involved to grow this backend. That's it for this week, guys. I hope you enjoyed. Next week, we'll go over the development environment and how we will be running and testing this backend code while we are developing something. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys next week.